something that I really began to question when reading Fire and Blood and watching House of the Dragon is exactly what is the role of the small council and how much power do they actually have. It seems to change somewhat from king to king and while the king always has the final say and the power to make the laws, the small council of Robert Baratheon seem to have a lot more freedom than that of say kings such as Maegor or Jaehaerys who appeared to keep the small council on a much tighter leash. In essence, the small council is a small group of advisors who assist the king in the ruling and running of the realm, specifically when it comes to the matters of policy and their own areas of expertise. The small council was first established by King Aegon the Conqueror in the wake of his conquest of Westeros when he named his base-born half-brother, Oris Baratheon, as the first hand of the king. Over the next few years, this small proto-small council grew as new roles were added. However, it would not be until the rule of his grandson, King Jaehaerys I, that the function and roles of the small council became a much more formalised body. Traditionally, the small council was made up of seven permanent members. Leading the council is the Hand of the King, the chief advisor and second most powerful man in the kingdom. We had representative of the Citadel, the Grand Maester, who advises the kings on matters of governance and history. The Master of Coin is the head of the treasury and finances of the Seven Kingdoms, and is more often than not the person to decide tax policy and trade regulations. The Master of Laws is an expert in the laws of Westeros and is also in direct control of the City Watch of King's Landing. The Master of Ships is the commander of the Royal Fleet and has historically been the head of House Valarian, but that is not always the case, with members of other houses often being placed in the role, especially after the Dance of the Dragons. The Master of Whispers is the Spy Master, tasked with the gathering of information. This role while it has been filled by highborn lords, it is most commonly filled by more lower-born persons with backgrounds in spycraft to some degree. Finally, the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard also sits upon the council. In most cases, the councillors are appointed by the king or the regent in cases where the king is still in his minority. However, it is often the hand of the king who suggests to the king who is best suited for the roles. In some cases, seats on the small council have been offered to houses as a form of peace term or to ensure loyalty, often meaning the men in these roles might not be the best for the job. The small council may sometimes include additional members as advisors. For example, the wife of King Jaehaerys I, Alessand Targaryen, regularly sat in on small council meetings, with her words often holding great sway and power it was also a common occurrence that Prince or Princess of Dragonstone, the king's heir, would also sit in on meetings from time to time to learn the ways of rule. While Lords of Westeros often make up the small council, it is not a rule. For example, bastards have been known to sit on the council, and even some highly skilled men from across the narrow sea, such as Rigo Draz, who acted as master of coin to King Jaehaerys. I teamed up with Flexi Spot, who sent me a motorized standing desk, perfect for any work at home office. Last October, I found myself having to leave my job. My channel had grown a lot over that summer, thanks to all of your support, so I decided to take a gamble to pursue it full time. The one thing I did miss about my old job was my desk, the very same desk Flexi Spot sent me. I appreciate the flexibility of being able to choose to sit or stand with the height ranging from 60 centimeters to 125. The anti-collision system and cable management it is also really handy with my puppy. It stops the desk hitting him. As anyone with a puppy knows, they love to chew cables. Flexi Spot are having a huge 7th anniversary sale up to 50% off from the 28th of August to the 1st of September. You can save up to £120 on my E8 standing desk. The sale has other perks. For the first 7 orders, 10am BST on the 28th, 31st and 1st you can have a full refund. There is also a chance to win a PS5 as well as other activities and prizes across their website. Thank you to Flexi Spot for supporting the channel. You can get your own desk by following the link in the description. The council itself is headed by the king. Officially, he is the only one who can make the council's decisions into law. Effectively, the only power the council has is to advise the king on matters. When the council reaches a decision or has a proposal that needs the king's seal, the hand then drafts the law. Once the king has read the proposal and then affixed his seal, it is now law. While their role 
is an advisory one. They're a vital part in the day-to-day -day general running of the kingdom. The extent of their power really depends on the mindset of the king. More relaxed and uninterested rulers, such as King Robert Baratheon, may just blindly sign anything the small council asks of him, effectively giving the men on the council a huge amount of power. It is not uncommon that under more hands-off kings, there was a lot more corruption within the small council, with some lords using their power to simply further their own interests. Then you have more involved kings, such as Jaehaerys, whom would not make a decision lightly, and before signing off on anything, would discuss the matter at length with the council, his wife, and his hand. In this sense, the council under Jaehaerys was truly an advisory body, but no matter how much power the mindset of the king gives the small council, they're still beholden to his will. For example, the king can name who he wishes to the council and dismiss a member in an instant for no reason. Typically, the small council meets privately in their council chamber in the Red Keep, with it changing locations over time. In some cases, the chamber is located directly behind the throne room or next to the king's own chamber. In the case of Tywin Lannister, in his second stint as Hand of the King and the King Joffrey Baratheon, he moved the meeting place of the council to his own chambers in the Tower of the Hand. When the king is not in attendance at the meeting, the hand may sit in the king's place at the head of the table. There is also a table for the small council situated at the base of the Iron Throne in the Great Hall of the Castle, used for public events. There is a secondary type of small council that has rarely actually been used, a council of regents. After the Dance of the Dragons, King Aegon III was still only a child and thus not able to rule in his own right. Typically, the role of Lord Protector and Regent are held by one person, but given the political instability of the realm, which was still very much divided in the wake of the Civil War, it was decided Aegon would have a council of regents, made up of men and women from both sides of the war. Lord Unwin Peak, the Hand of the King, also served as a protector of the realm on the small council of regents until his resignation in 134 AC. This council of regents ruled in the king's stead until he came of age, but was a separate entity than that of the small council. So, how much power does the small council actually have? It's a very prestigious thing to be named on the small council, and would be seen as a huge honour for many houses. This can be seen in how positions on the small council have been given away as ways to ensure the loyalty of lords, or to build bridges after disputes. A position on the council is a huge political tool, even if that means that sometimes men not fit for the role are given it. Members of the council had the king's ear and had the power to bring change, albeit with the king's blessing. The extent of their power is really affected by the kind of man the king is at the time. A lax king means the council has more freedom to do as they wish, and thus they have more power, while a more involved king invokes the opposite. Some men can leverage their position on the council for illicit means, taking bribes, bringing matters to the council in exchange for payment, pushing policies that enrich themselves, and with that comes a different kind of power. But at the end of the day, their role is still an advisory one, and while members of the council do hold a lot of power, the king's will is the king's will, and they serve at his pleasure.